possess it, and with the league's swiftest core of receivers, the Raiders are well aware of that fact. Put it to you this way, uh, I'm glad that I don't have to cover these guys because, I mean, you can try to create schemes to slow them down, but you ultimately, I don't think that you can stop speed. And that point has been repeatedly made in dramatic fashion as Raider receivers have stretched opposing defenses to the breaking point and beyond. We've got six, seven guys that can play in this league uh, that have uh, uh, extraordinary speed. And uh, each of them, once they catch the ball, can make something happen. So tonight, the pressure is on the Pittsburgh Steelers defenders who must try and find a way to contain the fearsome Raider air attack. Live from warm and humid Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Los Angeles Raiders take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hi, everyone, and welcome to KCAL's coverage of Los Angeles Raiders preseason football. I'm Rich Murata, along with former legendary NFL coach Hank Stram. The Raiders with back-to-back -back wins so far in the preseason over Denver and Dallas. And, Hank, as they reach the midway point, game three of a five-game preseason, what kind of an approach offensively do you think they take? I think primarily they have to work on two things. Number one, the running game. They have to improve that considerably, and in, in conjunction with that same thought, they must get the ball to the tight end. Well, while they haven't established uh, getting the ball to the tight end so far, they certainly are getting it to the wide receivers. One of them who has not caught a lot of balls so far, but certainly will in the regular season, is Tim Brown. And the Raider All-Pro thinks that this particular offense with this set of wide receivers may be unstoppable. I don't know how you stop this receiving court, to be honest with you. You can put five or six uh, defensive backs on the field, but once you do that, then you open up the running game. So uh, I think it's going to be very difficult, especially if Jeff stay healthy and, and uh, the guys stay healthy. It, it's going to be pretty tough to shut us down. Well, I don't know if they can be stopped. Tim Brown doesn't seem to think so. Uh, Hank, what about defenses and how they try to defend against this wide receiver core? I think every, every defensive back in the league is going to come off the bus backpedaling because they don't want to get licked deep, that's for sure. Well, they have been getting licked deep so far in the first couple of games. We'll see if the Raiders can continue to do that here tonight as they take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. So we hope you'll stay with us all night. We've got an exciting game coming up, and kickoff is next. Raiders preseason football is being brought to you by your Southern California Lexus dealer, who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. By Pacific Bell, providing telecommunication products and services for your home or business. And by Miller Lite. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? for the Pittsburgh Steelers. For the Raiders, their two receivers, Charles Jordan and Randy Jordan. That's Charles on the left. Charles caught the big touchdown pass last week. Randy Jordan, you might remember, played some running back for the Raiders last season. And we're just about ready. The Raiders with a 25-22 win over Denver, 27-19 over Dallas. Pittsburgh 0-1, lost its opener last week to Miami, 24-14. The Raiders 10-6 a year ago. The Steelers 9-7. Both teams were in the playoffs, and here we go. Bauman's kick, high and very deep for the new 30-yard kickoff line taken by Charles Jordan, and he is manhandled. Brought down hard by Rico Mack. And Rico is fired up. Look at him. He got too close to the wedge that time. Didn't really have a chance to make any kind of a move. And you talk about a sweet looking tackle. That was one. In a good hitting position. Used his head and shoulder pads. It was terrific. The Raiders will take over the football deep in their own territory now in the 14 at the controls. Jeff Hustetler. That excellent touchdown to interception ratio the same way as you saw there as it's been throughout his career. Hustetler. With Ty Montgomery and Napoleon McCallum behind him, gives it to Montgomery. He's strung out left side, but still gets some yardage out of it, and then he is knocked hard out of bounds. Put down by Darren Perry. There's Ty Montgomery. All right, let's take a look at the backs and receivers starting for the Raiders. McCallum and Montgomery in the backfield. At the wideouts, Tim Brown and James Jett. Andrew Glover, a poncho, as he's known to his teammates, starts at tight end. 
Along the line, Gerald Perry on the left side, along with Steve Wisniewski, Don Mosbar in center. On the right side of the line, Kevin Gogan and Bruce Wilkerson. Raiders come up to the ball now, second and seven. If they run, they're going to run right or play action right or something. Glover is over on that right side, making it the strong side. Is Hostetler looking very patient. And it's just to get rid of it at the last second to Tim Brown, a short game. Looks like another three-yard pickup for the Raiders. It'll be third and four. LeVon Kirkland with the tackle on Brown. That's a key breaker formation. Normally the back, the right half back, uh, was leaning up ahead of the fullback, which means most of the time they're going to run that way. Defensive line, Gerald Williams, Joel Steed, and Ray Seals, a free agent acquired this year. The linebackers, Green and Lloyd on the outside, Kirkland and Brown inside. And in the secondary, the all-pro Woodson, along with figures outside of the corners, Perry and Lake, the safety. Penalty flag down, Hostetler will run, trying to pick up the first down. Looks like he's got enough distance to get it, but let's take a look for the flag as Greg Lloyd brings him down. You've always got to keep your eyes on number 95, Greg Lloyd. He's a terrific outside linebacker. That time they were in a double zone, and any time they're in a double zone, you always have a chance for something good to happen in the middle. That's why he took off and ran. Well, Hostetler had sight of that. Defense, penalties decline. First down. Hostetler getting enough for the first down for the Raiders on that scramble up the middle. And Art Schell with a hand clap, happy about what he's seeing so far. So the Raiders have their initial first down of the ball game. Art with an outstanding record since he became the head coach. See, the safeties are back there about 10 yards deep, so they're very, very concerned about deep that. Out of the eye formation, it's Montgomery. Finds some running room, clipped hard. Straight on, but he gets across the 35 up to the 36-yard line. Darren Perry, the free safety up. He's a strong run support guy, and he makes the tackle. That's the one thing about double zone, meaning that the safeties go to the outside behind the corners because they're worried about the deep. Look at watch Timmy Brown here get a block. Uses a shoulder pad. Does a good job on Lake, number 37. Arnell Lake, pretty tough man to move out of UCLA. You fans from Los Angeles familiar with him. He was a linebacker at UCLA, now a strong safety here in the pros. Here again, if they run, it should be something to the right. Here they do run for a tackle. And it was Montgomery, but he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Ray Seals. Seals, 309 pounds. In his seventh year. Watch Seals now, number 97. You talk about a snootful, he is that was running away from Greg Lloyd, the outside linebacker we told you about, but Seals did a good job plugging the hole. This is a guy with no college experience. He's one of only two players in the NFL right now playing who did not play in college. The Eric Swan of the Arizona Cardinals, the other one. For the Raiders, it's third and four now at the 34. Look at the left side. Hostetler looking upfield. He's got a wide open Timmy Brown. Over the shoulder grab, but he was out of bounds. Well, the right corner was way, way off that time. He had a shot at either one of the two receivers on the outside. Rod Woodson on the coverage. Watch it now. The pass protection is good. Steps up into the pocket, looks left, throws the ball deep down the field. But he takes him too far to the outside, and he can't keep both feet in bounds. Brown trying to drag those feet. The official said no. And here's Jeff Gossett now in his 13th year in the NFL. Leslie Shepard back. Calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 25-yard line. A 41-yard punt by Gossett and no return, of course. So the Raiders stopped. We have timeout called on the field. 11:41 to go. First quarter, no score. All right, we're scoreless in the first quarter. Just the start of things. Only three minutes, 19 seconds into the ball game, and there's Neil O'Donnell. The fifth year quarterback, very steady, pretty reliable quarterback, made the Pro Bowl two years ago at the controls and gives the ball to Barry Foster in his first appearance of the year. And Barry Foster is slammed down at the line of scrimmage by Anthony Foster Smith, Jerry Ball, ball and Nolan Harrison. Penalty flag on the play. Jerry Ball got good penetration in that number 93. That looked like one of those destruction balls knocking down the building <laughs> the way he got across that line of scrimmage. Uh, he's glad you didn't say bowling ball. 
Neil O'Donnell, two to one touchdown to interception ratio. Last week uh, had kind of a slow start to the preseason. Completed only three of nine passes Holding against Miami. Number 22 offense, 10 yards, still first down. One thing about the Steelers, last year they only threw 12 interceptions, which is the lowest number of uh, interceptions in the history of the Pittsburgh Steelers, especially since the 16 game schedule got started. They play a pretty cautious offensive style. They've got Stone out to the left along with the Ernie Mills. O'Donnell trying to air it out, looking for Mills and overthrown. Mills matched up there with Terry McDaniel, the Raiders Pro Bowl Ashley cornerback. Ball, we take a look at the offensive lineup now for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the backfield. Barry Foster, who led the AFC in rushing two years ago. John L. Williams, a great player from Seattle who signed as a free agent. Mills and Stone, the receivers. Jonathan Hayes, the tight end from Kansas City, replacing Eric Green, the great tight end, who was a holdout along the offensive line. Jackson, Love, Dawson, Callis, and Searcy make up the, the blocking front for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Second and 10, ball at the 15-yard line. Foster, his first carry officially, and he is brought down in the middle. Foster with the carry. By the Raiders' Mike Jones. Foster last year. Take a look at that Raider down. defensive line, Andre Bruce. Jerry Ball replaces Chester McLaughlin being held out for precautionary reasons tonight after getting a little nicked up in Dallas last week. Nolan Harrison and Anthony Smith on the right side. At the linebackers on the outside, Wallace and Moss, Greg Beaker anchoring the middle of the, off the linebacking crew. McDaniel and Washington, the corners for the Raiders. Anderson and Hoskins, the safeties. Third and 11 now for Pittsburgh. Plenty of time for O'Donnell. He's got a wide open man across the middle and it's dropped. Yancey Thigpen was wide open. Would have had a first down and an easy completion, and he just couldn't hang on. They caught him in a blitz that time. Should have been, should have caught that pass. I started to say Barry Foster rushed for 711 yards last year. Missed the last five games because of a bad foot. But he is really a great running back and makes a big difference when he's in the game for the Steelers. Daryl Hobbs now will receive on the Mark Royals punt. Royals a good punter. There's a lot of punts that aren't returned. Hobbs will try to bring this one back goal on the right sideline. Hobbs is up to the 45-yard line. 44-yard punt and a 12-yard return by Daryl Hobbs. Ed Robinson on the tackle. So the Raiders get the ball back with 10-19 to go in the first quarter and no score. And 19 to go in the first quarter of play. The Raiders have the ball. Excellent field position just inside the 50. Same lineup for the Raiders, and they split their back. Hostetler checking off, apparently, at the line of scrimmage. Little blitz. Looking for his tight end, and he's got Andrew Glover. Nice play by the Raiders. Glover over near the sidelines, out of bounds at the 39-yard line, a 15-yard pickup. That's a very important catch for Glover. It's the first one he's made this season so far. But with the outstanding speed they have on the outside, they've got to get the ball to the tight end to make him respect the middle area. He breaks to the outside. The ball's thrown a little bit late, but he still makes the catch and goes out of bounds for the first down. Nice, nice looking play. Andrew Glover, he's a real good athlete, Glover, and he has the ability to hang on to that football, especially uh, when he's down near the end zone. And a, lot, a good percentage of his uh, pass receptions so far have come and ended up in touchdowns. Hostetler waiting, overthrows. Looking for Tim Brown over the middle. And Dion Figures, second year defensive back out of Colorado, stepping into the starting lineup this year. There on the coverage. There's Don Mosbar, who we expect to play only a quarter tonight for the Raiders. Good pass protection on the play. Steps up into the pocket, holds the ball nicely. Still no pressure, throws the ball into the middle area. The ball's a little bit too high and incomplete. Had he thrown it at the numbers, that would have been a strike. Second and 10 for the Raiders inside the 40. Jet is wide left and Brown wide right. Montgomery over the left side. Steps out of the tackle of figures and across the 35 down to the 34. Good blocking at the point of attack by Perry and Wisniewski on the left side, open up a nice cavity. 
Watch the left side now. Look at the blocks. McCallum goes through there and nicely picks up the lead block. And Montgomery does the rest with uh, a nice move to the outside. Third and five at the 34. Osteller looking downfield and then throws short over the middle, trying to get it to Jet. But we're unaccustomed to seeing in that short zone over the middle. <laughs> but it was incomplete. Well, that's, you know, that's what you have to do. You have to get to the middle area one way or the other. You've got to use a crossing pattern to the receivers, or they run deep and get the ball to the tight end. Watch Greg Lloyd now, number 95, leaping up on top, makes him throw the ball poorly, falls incomplete. Now, in years past, uh, Hank, this would have been a position where the Raiders probably would have gone for a field goal, but now with the new rule where the ball is brought back to the place where the kicker kicks it instead of the line of scrimmage, they'll go for it. Hostetler in trouble. He's got a completion of Tim Brown and a first down for the Raiders inside the 15-yard line. He beats Gary Jones on the play for a 19-yard pass completion. The great thing about that pattern was the fact that he was very, very patient, talking about Hostetler. Good pass protection in the middle area, but he didn't panic. Watch it here now. Look at he looking, he's looking. Look at the middle area. That's the area that's got to be vulnerable. That's a void in the defense, and they hit the void in the defense, and they get the first down. A nice play, good execution. Watch Timmy Brown. They put the, put the squeeze on him. That's holding. Now that off the line of scrimmage, but they don't call it. That was Woodson hanging on to him. They run, they're going to run right. Let's see what happens here. Nope, they're going to pass again. The jet left side, and there was offside, I believe, on the play. That'll be called here against Pittsburgh, and the Raiders should be able to pick up five yards in this play. The offside is against Pittsburgh. It was Greg Lloyd, the man that jumped. Outside linebacker went up on the outside of that defensive line and came across too fast. Well, he's a very aggressive guy. He oh, likes boy, to put a lot of pressure. <laughs> and he does that very, very well. Offside, number 95 defense, five yards, still first down. Offside. He's a guy with a real mean streak, Hank. He's just not out on the <laughs> field. He's not just aggressive. But he's been very, very uh, effective as he channels that into effective play. Three times named to the Pro Bowl. Raiders have a first and five here now at the 10-yard line. Still just the one tight end for me. Montgomery. Two yards on the play. It'll be second and three. Too much penetration that time. That's one thing about running from a conventional formation. The left half back, Montgomery, is about four yards deep in that kind of a play. And uh, as a result, he doesn't have much of an opportunity to cut back. Nothing at all like he does when he's back there seven or seven and a half from the I formation. Art Shell talking there with Fred Bolitnikov. But is Bolitnikov actually the man who signals into the play, signals in the play to Jeff Hostetler through the quarterback communication system? And Tom Walsh calls the play from the press box, sends it down to Freddie, and Fred, Freddie sends it into in Hostetler. That's the chain of command. Brown and Jet both on the left side for the Raiders. Hostetler in trouble, throws it away. See, Joel another, Speed putting the pressure on. Another great illustration of poise and confidence. He knew exactly what he had to do. Everybody was faded, no place to throw the ball. So he threw it out of the end zone. Let's look at the outside pressure by Green. And there's Steed spinning onto him. Well, the thing that made it tough was the fact that Steed got, Steed got pressure up the middle. And that's why normally, if he didn't have that pressure, he would have had a chance to make some yardage right up the middle, but he didn't. So far in the preseason, Jeff Hostetler right at 50%. That's right up to date. He, of course, last year threw for better than 56%, now very high quarterback rating. Haas scrambling right side. Touchdown, Raiders! Darrell Hobbs. An eight-yard pass completion from Hostetler to Hobbs who continues to impress everybody. You know what happened on the play, and that's the great thing about the, the, the ability to scramble. When you scramble, the defensive people have a tendency to get off the coverage, and all of a sudden, somebody's wide open like he ran right out of the bleachers. Watch Hobbs, watch Hobbs, there he is, in the cavity. 
Look at that, wide open for the touchdown. And that's, again, the result of, an, uh, of a quarterback who can move by design and make things happen by using his capability skill like he did. Hobbs ran that defensive back right to the goal post and then cut back the other way. And right. That kept going. But see, when the quarterback gets out of there, then they're, they're, they're wondering, well, should I come up and try to make the tackle or drop the receiver? That's what happens. So Hostetler puts the Raiders on the board with a touchdown pass to Darrell Hobbs. 6.50 to go first quarter. Raiders up by a touchdown. Hobbs is doing everything possible, Hank, to make a place on this football team for him to participate and contribute this year. It's going to be hard, very hard, not to be able to keep him because he's, a, he's really an excellent receiver with good hands and great speed. Well, he was with the team last year, but inactive for all 16 games. So he never actually got to suit up and take part out there. The Raiders going 55 yards in eight plays, and the key play, remember, in that drive, the fourth down play when the Raiders decide not to go for the field goal. Instead, they hit Tim Brown, Hostelman did, for the 19-yard pickup. And that was a good choice by Art Shell and his coaching staff to go ahead and do that in that particular situation. So Jeff Jager getting ready to kick off now for the Raiders, who have the lead of 7 to nothing. Dwight Stone will be the man deep to receive for Pittsburgh. Jager in his eighth year in the NFL, sixth year with the Raiders. And there's the new one-inch kicking tee, Hank. Well, you know, that uh, the one-inch kicking tee uh, <laughs> allows you to kick, kick the ball, and as far as hang time is concerned, about three-tenths of a second. We've got a run back up the left sideline off a short kick. Dwight Stone was the man deep, but instead it was Andre Hastings who came up, grabbed the football, and found a lane up the left side for a 29-yard return. And it'll be good field position now for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here we see the return. Good decision here now. See, there's no hesitation on his part whatsoever. Sees the cavity, goes through the cavity, got the ball away from pressure. Doesn't use the straight arm, however, but finally gets it knocked out of bounds. But there's no dancing. There's no twinkle to it around. He knows where he's going and did a good job on the return. Donald and quarterbacks in motion, and here comes Barry Foster right behind him. Short gain, and I think we'll see a lot of that this year. Barry Foster following the blocking of John L. Williams. Looked like Bruce got penetration that time on the play and got penetration on the play and stopped it. Barry Foster, Barry Foster two years ago led the AFC rushing 1,690 yards. That was only 23 yards behind Emmett Smith that year for the complete NFL rushing championship. Then was injured last year, of course, had ankle surgery in the offseason. Second and eight. Battle has the completion. Greg Beaker making the tackle on Craig Keith, tight end, a 16-yard pickup. The problem here was he didn't get much of a pass rush. He had plenty of time to step into the pocket, got rid of the ball nicely. Bruce was getting penetration. He delivered the ball beautifully, and Beaker makes the tackle. First down for the Steelers, five and a half minutes to go. First quarter of play. Raiders lead 7-0 at the 43-yard line. John L. Williams running back inside and brought down by Lionel Washington up on a strong force from that corner position. He was very tentative running that ball to the left side. He had the ball in the wrong arm going to the left with the ball in the right arm. Had no chance whatsoever to, to help himself in the event that he got into the open field. But he's very tentative on the last play. Well, Merrill Hodge, who was the fullback with this team last year, left as a free agent. And John L. Williams comes over from Seattle. I think really Pittsburgh does better with that, Williams a terrific receiver as well as blocker. Yeah, he's done a, he's been a very, very outstanding back for the Seattle Seahawks. Second and eight now for Pittsburgh. Wallace coming at him, and Nolan Harrison nearly finishes him off, but somehow O'Donnell with a Houdini act with a wide open lane down the left sideline goes out of bounds deep in Raider territory. Unbelievable, it seemed to be a sure sack behind the line of scrimmage. It, it appeared as though Nolan Harrison would get to him. Well, what happened was, you know, they got good, they got a good penetration on the last play, but nobody wrapped him up. See, look at, look at, see, they knock him beyond the passer, 
And look at this. They still don't wrap him up. They get his jersey, but it's not strong enough. And as a result, he scampers to the outside. He goes all the way down the sideline. A beautiful run by the quarterback. And finally runs out of bounds before Aaron Wallace, number 51, is going to give him a little massage on the sideline. Well, the Raiders are going to live, fortunately, a penalty. Holding. Number 20. Offense. 10 yards. First down. The holding penalty is called against Dwight Stone. It is still a first down. It was downfield. He gets credit for a 25-yard run on the play. But there's a Dwight Stone, Wall number pass. 20. He's got a he's got him in a vice there, grabbing his shoulder pad, very obviously holding on a play. And a good play, good call by the official. So it's first and ten at the 26 with 4:20 to go in the first quarter. It is trying to hang on to their seven-point lead. Harry Foster, big right tackle, and not much there. Beaker, Derek Hoskins, and Winston Moss combining to make the tackle. Hoskins really did a great job from the safety position. Got in there and hit it with the shoulder pads and moved it a little bit backwards. Great hit. Great hit by Hoskins. Barry Foster, 1990, believe it or not, was the 19th running back chosen in the NFL draft. 18 backs chosen before Barry Foster. Yeah, that's typical of what can happen in the draft. Everybody's got an opinion. It varies considerably. Screen. McDonald backpedaling. He induced the Raiders into a big rush, and he's got the ball to Foster, who does not really catch a lot of passes. He's run out of bounds by Derek Hoskins. Ron Earhart calls a play for the Pittsburgh Steelers and does a terrific job of that. He was led the AFC in rushing. Close to a first down. Now they'll measure for it. And it's going to be short, so it'll be third and less than a yard to go at the Raiders 17-yard line. Earhart likes play action passes sometimes in this particular situation. He might do that or else he might go for it just with a quick surge straight ahead. Here's Bill Cowan. Turn the franchise around. The Steelers have kind of fallen on hard times. And in two years, his teams have won 20 and lost only 12. He's had them in the playoffs both seasons. And there's going to be, I think they induced the Raiders into an offside penalty there. Looked like it might have been Jerry Ball. Yeah, hard 93. count. Hard count by O'Donnell. And that is an offside against the Raiders. And that'll give it, give him the first down. There he is. You see him. Encroachment. See him Number encroach. 93 defense. Five yards. That's a first down. See, there's a great illustration of the new rule. They're not supposed to be, encro be able to encroach the, the uh, neutral zone, and they're way into the neutral zone, and nobody's called it yet. So it is now first and 10 at the 11 yard line. O'Donnell, big rush, sack. Anthony Smith gets to him. They say it is not a fumble, that the ball was down. Anthony Smith, the Raiders sack master from last year, who had 12 and a half sacks with a big rush that time to corral O'Donnell. Watch Anthony Smith, number 94, coming on the outside now. Look, he uses his hands good, pushes the, the tackle out of the way, and makes a good hit on the quarterback. Excellent job by Anthony Smith. That's his first sack for 1994. Good, good picture, good shot by Anthony Smith. No wonder, no wonder he's all smiles. He must have knew he was going to make that play before they took that picture. <laughs> now he's made a lot of those plays. He's had 36 sacks in the three previous years. Here's a reverse now to Dwight Stone. And he's got big running room, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. They suckered the Raiders to the right side with that reverse, and Stone ran it all the way in. That's what they like to do. We just talked about Ron Earhart. He loves the screens, he loves the reverses, and he loves the play action pass. They normally take the bus. Very rarely do they take the jet. I'm a part of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bauman kicks it through. The extra point is good. And the Steelers have tied it up after that reverse, which was good for 18 yards and the touchdown. It was to Foster, to Stone, to the end zone. That was really a good-looking play. Terrific execution and a good block downfield by one of the line, one of the linemen downfield. 2:14 to go in the first quarter. It's all tied up at seven. They took Lionel Washington out of the play, and there's Dwight Stone, wide receiver. Lionel, Florida. In his eighth year. Charlie Bauman now with the kick. 
Charles Jordan settles underneath it at the 10. Middle return, good running room. Nice return by the Raiders. Out to the 32-yard line, and here's a penalty flag come out late. Reggie Barnes on the tackle. It's against the Raiders. And silver and black in their white uniforms tonight will be marched back. Art Shell, back in the great days of the Raiders-Steelers rivalry back in the 70s. And those Number two teams 52. were meeting all the During time the in the playoffs. And 10 yards. Art Shell used to First be matched down. up against Dwight White. Well, I tell you, he's, Art was a fantastic player, which is obvious. He's in the Hall of Fame and is really doing a great job with this Raider team. Players have a lot of respect for him and admiration for him, and he's got their uh, attention from a discipline standpoint. The attitude of this team is very, very good. Same lineup for the Raiders. And at first down, it's Napoleon McCallum. And the Admiral spruits forward for about a yard or so. Darren Perry making the tackle. Perry, a third-year player out of Penn State. Again, it's going to be against Los Angeles, and the Raiders will go back even further backwards. That's what Cowher says, push them back. Holding, number 71 offense, 10 yards, still first down. That's Perry, Perry the number 71, the left tackle, and he's a good one. I guarantee you, if he continues to play like he has, and capable of playing, he'll be in the Pro Bowl this year. That's a strong left side of the line for the Raiders with Perry and Wisniewski over there. Yeah, they are. They're really uh, a couple of 300-pounders that really moved the punt. At the 12-yard line, now first and 20. movement again and I think it was over on that left side again Hank yes it was yeah Timmy Timmy uh, Brown was uh, running in motion to the left side but somebody was over, moved prematurely on the left side it is a motion penalty against Los Angeles watch Perry the left tackle again number 71 watching there he is he moves early and as a result five yard penalty for the Raiders Offense moving prior to the snap. I had to practice Five that. Al had me work on that for about two weeks. That was very before good. I got this job. Yeah, I'm, I'm, say proud I'm proud of you. Say it one more time. Say that again. Yeah, Raiders. Raiders. Very good. Yeah. I couldn't get this job unless I learned how to say Raiders. <laughs> well, you learned. First and 25, all the way back at the seven yard line now. First and a mile and a half to go. Austin went back in his own end zone. Incomplete intended for Brown, who wants a pass interference call on Darren Perry, and he's not going to get it. That looked like a holdup down the middle of the field. I thought there was going to be a flag, but they didn't. Uh, they really mugged him on that last play. Tim Brown, last year, 80 receptions for the Raiders. Of course, eight more big ones in two games in the playoffs. He's already been named to the Pro Bowl three times. They were coming up the middle on him. There again, great poise on a part of Hostetler. Look at that. Look at that. That's pass interference. He was trying to make the catch, and it gave him a little ice shot on the shoulder pad on the left side. No way that wasn't pass interference on the play. Montgomery on second and 25. Sports forward for about three. Carnell Lake making the tackle. Along with uh, LaVon Kirkland, inside linebacker. Here's Mike White next to Art Shell. Yeah, he's squeaking a little bit about something on the sideline, Mike White. Now it's third and 22 as they bring in Miller as the fifth defensive back. Excuse me, Haller is a fifth defensive back now. The Raiders keep just two wide receivers on the field. It's Brown and Jeff. Something in the middle should be open. Something in the middle. Uh oh, they're going to run the ball up the middle. A little high diddle diddle there, but uh, didn't work. Montgomery brought down quickly. Greg Lloyd, Ray Seals, sealing the middle. And the first quarter comes to an end here at Three Rivers Stadium, which is sold out here tonight. And through the first quarter of play, the Los Angeles Raiders and the Pittsburgh Steelers are all tied. The score, Raiders 7, the Steelers 7. 
Raiders and Pittsburgh tied at seven apiece through one quarter of play. The Raiders scoring on a Hostetler to Hobbs eight yard touchdown pass and a reverse to Dwight Stones for 18 yards, giving the Pittsburgh Steelers their score. Take a look down the sideline of the Los Angeles Raiders with their famous emblem on their helmets. Elegant simplicity for the Raider uniforms. yards deep into the end zone is Gossett. Let's see if they put a rush on. Nope, they'll file back for a return. He works Shepard over to the right sideline. Good job by Gossett. A great, great punt. What a brilliant punt by Jeff Gossett. He made it almost impossible for Shepard to catch the ball, so Shepard let it go, and he got huge distance out of it. to the extent of 65 yards as we take a look at those first quarter stats the Raiders dominating in terms of passing yardage and the total yardage but everything else just about even Neil O'Donnell still at quarterback Pittsburgh first and 10 at the 23 yard line the handoff goes to Bam Morris, the rookie out of Texas Tech, brought down by Nolan Harrison. Bam Morris, last week against Miami, played very well. Averaged about four and a half yards a carry. Was their leading ball carrier, in fact. Eight carries, 35 yards. And a penalty flag on the play. It is personal foul coming against the Pittsburgh Steelers. 7-7 tie. Rich Murata and Hank Stram live at Three Rivers Stadium. Next week, it's the Raiders and the Los Angeles Rams at Anaheim Stadium coming your way live, 7 p.m. next Saturday night. Personal foul. Personal foul. Crack back. Number 89. 89. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Ernie Mills is the man called for a crack back block. Crack back means, of course, they're blocked below the waist. Can't do that. You can do it, but the official sees you. It's a pen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Yancey Thigpen now out wide to the right side. Raiders making some defensive changes. We'll get to those in a second. O'Donnell in trouble, unloads, and has a completion to John L. Williams. That is a good pass receiving fullback, John L. Williams. Mike Jones on the tackle. Mike Jones. Mike Jones, 52, did a good job of reading the play. It was a pay play action and a roll to the right side offensively, and he got there in good coverage and did a super job. John L. Williams is fifth all-time in the National Football League for receptions by a running back. I thought he was a terrific back for Seattle. So just four guys ahead of him, and he's less than 100 passes away from being number one all-time. goal line and there's that completion to Bam Morris the rookie out of Texas Tech James Trapp making the tackle for Los Angeles they like the way that Bam Morris played enough to the point where they were able to trade Leroy Thompson this week watch Trapp now comes in here nicely watch the left side of the screen he makes the catch but he's right there it's just uh, just a very very short gain on the play beautiful coverage on a part of number 37 track. Third and 18. Ball way back on the Pittsburgh 15 yard line. Out of the gun now. Donald takes the direct snap. Completion to Williams. Spins away from a man. Finally brought down by Garrett Haskins. For a first down, however. And there's that pass at the 35. John L. For about three yards. Aaron Wallace in on the tackle along with Nolan Harrison. Here's John Fox, a defensive coach for the Raiders. Really an outstanding, one of the outstanding defensive coaches in the National Football League. He calls the defenses from the sideline. 
with help from people in the press box. Ball is now at the 38-yard line, second and seven coming from Pittsburgh. Raiders making some situation substitutions now. John Duff, who was a tight end last year for the Raiders, comes in to play the left side of the defensive line. Terry McDaniel back in for Los Angeles. Fredrickson is now the middle linebacker for L.A. in this fourth grade. O'Donnell gets the completed pass to Keith. Brought down by Anderson no rush, and Fredrickson. No pass rush. Let's take a look at it again. Not enough pass rush on the play. Had plenty of time to throw the ball. Watching back in the pocket. Getting a good push. But look at look at all the time he's got to throw. He points to the receiver to get to the outside. He delivers the ball on target and another completed pass. Beautiful work by the Pittsburgh offensive line as they kept the Raiders outside. Developed a nice pocket for O'Donnell to work from. First and ten at the 49. Inside the 50-yard line. There's a Raider fan. All decked out in his black. black cap. Somebody just told him he was on TV, too. Did you see that smile? Short game for Bam Morris. Rob Fredrickson making the tackle, along with Scott Davis. Second down, eight. Expecting big things out of him. They like what they've seen so far in the training camp of preseason. Donald has a nice completion on the play to Dwight Stone is having a big night. Stone brought down at the 41-yard line. He'll be short of the first down, however. Albert Lewis making the tackle. Again, again, kind of a negative pass rush. Not enough pressure on the quarterback, although he, he got rid of it pretty quickly on the play, but there still has to be more pressure. Raiders make mass substitutions now defensively. Lewis stays in, but all the other cornerback, Terry McDaniel, goes out on third and one. Straight ahead, put that head down, and Bam Morris gets the first down. Well, you talk about a push. They got a good offensive push off the line of scrimmage and made the first down without any problems whatsoever. Here's a push. Look at this. Look at him coming off the line of scrimmage. The back hugs the block of the right tackle and the tight end. And he goes up there, right up the middle for a nice gain on the play. Here's another look at it. Look at look at him protect the ball. Does a good job of protecting the ball and goes through the pile and comes out the other end. It's Bam Morris. First name, Byron. And Byron has the ball again. Fighting off tackle. Bringing him down, Alberto White. It was a counter play that time, meaning the fullback hit up the middle and the back went to the other side. When it, whenever you see that kind of a play, when the back hits up the middle, that means he's trying to hold the middle linebacker and fill for the pulling guard. Steady march up the field by the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've got second and six now with 8.45 to go in the first half. The score still tied at seven, but the Steelers threatening. Scott Davis is now playing left end, number 70. They run the other way away from Davis, but Jerry Ball with a man-sized hit to bring down Bam Morris, but not before he gets close to the first down. There's a straight-ahead shot again. Good pursuit but not good enough, and he goes through the cavity for the first down for another nice gain in the play. Yeah, and again, Hank, they have third and one. Second straight time, they've come up to a third and one situation. Steelers moving the ball well on the ground. Bam Morris again, first down, Pittsburgh, off the left side. Mike Jones making the tackle along with Jerry Ball, but Pittsburgh has the ball again and will retain possession. Well, I tell you, that long without a mistake in a pregame warm-up. Well, they've done it in a drive, and they've reached the 24-yard line here of the Raiders. McDonald puts it up incomplete. See, that kind of a ball you can't throw above, above the shoulder pads. You have to throw it at the numbers coming across the middle because a lot of people watch Trap. Watch this. Watch Trap 37. So here he comes. Ball's up in the air, and the, and the ball then goes up in the air, too. Anytime a receiver 
coming into that middle area he's got to be able to catch the ball in stride it's got to be thrown at the numbers you throw it up on top and all of a sudden it winds up being a tipping drill. Kerry Brabham was the other Raider who sandwiched Ernie Mills on the play. O'Donnell is seven out of ten so far having a big night. Mills comes wide right again O'Donnell in a little bit of trouble. Nolan Harrison after him. Throws it away. Good, good call by O'Donnell. Good judgment on his part. He knew he was in trouble and dumped the ball off out of bounds. The Raiders are going to get called for a personal foul penalty here, and I think they're going to get him on a roughing the passer, which they're going to call closer this year, by the way. Another one of the penalties that they're talking about uh, enforcing in a closer to a closer degree than they have in the past. Let's take a look at this now. Watch. Watch he come running to the left side. Now let's see what transpires here. Oh yeah. Unnecessary roughness. The hit was not necessary. Uh, that was and definitely a penalty. It'll be a first down, half the distance to the goal. That was White. White, number 96, making a late hit. And they said the hit was not necessary. That's how he put it. And the ball on the seven-yard line now, and Pittsburgh threatening to go in and take the lead. There is White, number 96. He's shaded there. There he is sitting on the bench and uh, disconsolate about the fact that he made that mistake. Here's Bam Morris going to try to go up the right side and the Raiders have plugged it up. Nicely. Steve Hendrickson along with Aaron Wallace making the tackle. Hendricks is number 53 did a nice job of filling the hole also at the middle linebacker position. And up off the bottom James Trapp who wears number 37 who's Happens to be another speedster on the Raiders of world class <laughs> proportions, but not a wide receiver. Here's Fredrickson, the Raiders' top draft pick this year, 22nd overall. He was an all Big Ten linebacker, tied for the Big Ten lead with five forced fumbles last year and led the team in tackles. He can really run, too. O'Donnell has John L. Williams, but he can't get away. Penalty flag down, probably a face mask penalty coming. What it is, face back and pass, and again, obviously, no pass, part, pass rush whatsoever on the five yard face mask to attack on to the end of the play. Half the distance to the goal, still second down. The penalties certainly have helped the Steelers out on this drive. I tell you, they're very impressive in this drive, and of course, the Raiders are changing people, constantly getting a good look. You know, one thing about uh, that's very important to the Raiders, I know Al Davis. Art Shell, they do not like to play on synthetic turf. And if they have anybody at all with any kind of an injury with a foot or a leg, they don't play in the game because they don't want to further injure, injure those players. It's the second and one in the three yard line. Play action. Into the end zone. Touchdown. Pittsburgh Steelers. Tim Jordan with the reception. That's what they love down here. We talked about Earhart. He mixes him up very, very well. Play action pass. They took a sniff of the fake, and uh, the tight end is wide open on the flat. Jo Jordan is wide open in the end zone. 84. There you see him. Tim Jordan, not a man they throw to very much. He only made one reception last year. And, of course, Eric Green is a holdout right now, and they don't have Green, but so they're looking for other tight ends to throw to, and in this case, it was Tim Jordan. And they miss Green, of course. He's a franchise player. And... Uh, coming back they're speaking about the contract Hank they're lining up for a two-point uh, conversion attempt here and now and now the Raiders call a timeout Pittsburgh lined up for a two-point conversion and the Raiders seen that call for timeout a good call on the Raiders because they got to get their other defensive people in the game take the kick here and still go for the two-point play let's see where they line up for the hole on this play there's the holder who is Royals, who was the punter on this team. It used to be they put the ball down seven yards. Now they're putting it back a little deeper, about seven and a half to eight yards, depending on whether it's synthetic turf or, or grass. We've got a fight for the breakout after the point after. But the officials quickly in to break it up. Now the flags come out and flying. So while cooler heads prevail and they go to the sidelines, Raiders trail 14-7. Seven Raiders lead or trail the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers with 5.56 to go. Charlie Bauman getting ready to tee it up, kick it off. 
Bauman is replacing Gary Anderson, another contract pulled out. And Anderson, of course, you talk about franchise players. I guess he's a franchise kicker, and he wants more money. Well, he wants them to ring the cash register a little bit more, and they haven't done that, and so that's why he's not up here. So Bauman is the man who will kick off after that 17-play, 77-yard drive. Bauman sends this one high and deep. He's got a strong leg, Bauman. This is Charles Jordan right at the middle. To the 27. You know, that kind of a kickoff return, the back has to say go. Somebody's got to say go to the front <laughs> four to lead the um, kick returner. And sometimes they're a little slow, and as a result, the back gets too close to those people and doesn't have an opportunity to get through the hole because it's too congested. And now with 547 to go in the second quarter, the Raiders are going to have their first offensive play of the second quarter. Vince Evans will now be the quarterback for the Raiders as they tr change some of their uh, personnel on the field. Vince Evans, look at some of these guys who were drafted way back then when Vince Evans came into the league as a sixth round draft pick out of USC for the Chicago Bears. Vince now airing it out. He's got a man, it's Jed, and it goes right through his hands. Looked as though it was going to be a touchdown for the Raiders. Jed had blown open, and it appeared as though the Raiders were going to get a touchdown on the first play that they've had the ball in this quarter. See, that's what, look at this, look at the Jet running away from the defensive back. I don't know how, I don't know whether he saw the ball quickly enough. One thing when you're catching a ball, the first thing you have to do is make sure that you move your head quickly. Locate the ball as fast as you can. It looked like he was a little slow turning that head around to see the ball, and that's why it fell incomplete. Boy, he had Darren Perry flat out beat. And he's gonna throw now on second down. Has a completion to Harvey Williams, who has a little trouble hanging on to the football, but somehow he managed to hang on and gets a short game. Harvey, who wears number 22 as the Los Angeles Raider, halfback, fourth year out of LSU. Here we see it in the flat. He juggles the ball a little bit, but manages to recapture the ball as it goes down. It's a wonder that was the fumble, but he did manage to maintain possession of the ball, and, the, and, and it finally... Hey. Finally, uh, that's a good good expression. That's a nice way to use your head, isn't it? <laughs> that's a good trick, I'll tell you that. Vince Evans, high completion mark last year, nearly 60%. Third down, rush on. Whoa! Vince steps up. He's got Daryl Hodge running across in pattern over the middle, and Hodge is across midfield for a first down for Los Angeles. A 28-yard pickup for Daryl Hodge and a line drive pass for Vince Evans. There was a middle blitz. I couldn't tell whether it was a safety blitz. But Evans stood right in there. Evan, Evans stood right in there tough. Watch him. Watch, you'll see the blitz coming right up the middle. All right, pressure. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Right in there. But he still got rid of the ball nicely, even though there was somebody right in his face on the play. It was a safety, Gary Jones, coming in on a safety blitz, Hank. But Evans did a good job of getting rid of it. Big play for the Raiders, and Hobbs comes through again. Here's Ismail on a reverse from Dan. Down he goes. Rod Woodson making the tackle. Five-time Pro Bowler. AP Defensive Player of the Year last year for plays just like that. There you go. There's a great illustration of guessing right. There was a blitz on with a corner. He got penetration and found the reverse. And look what I found. Look what I did accidentally on the play. Right call by the defensive coaches on the blitz on the corner. So they blitz the safety and blitz the corner on successive plays now. You bet. Three and a half minutes to go, second quarter. Steelers up, 14-7. Evans on second down. That's Harvey Williams. Good lead for Williams. Brought down by Chad Brown, inside linebacker. Evans is unbelievable the way he'll go into the game and spark this this particular team. Second down and five. Pittsburgh 41. Out in the flat and in good shape to, to Williams. Makes the catch. Goes down the sideline. Finally knocked out of bounds. Nice looking play again. Evans looks down the field and then throws it in the flat to Williams. Raiders go to a three wide receiver set. Jet wide left for Rocket and Hobbs wide right. Evans on third and five. Looking for Hobbs. Incomplete. Let him a little bit too much. And now they're going to call a pass interference apparently on Williams. 
Willie Williams is going to be the man flag. Hobbs did a little selling job out there. He was squeaking about the call, and they finally dropped the dropped the handkerchief. Like 27, Williams on the hit. No question, a little bit early. Good call on the part of the official. Here's another better look at it. That's a good call by the official. Pass interference. That will result in a first down now for the Raiders. See, there again, that's what happens when you throw the ball too high. You've got to throw that kind of a ball right at the numbers, out in front, so he can catch it about a yard and a half out in front of the numbers. Once he has to leap for the ball, once he has to come back for the ball, you're in trouble. He's got to catch that ball in stride so he can keep running and make extra yardage on the play. Normally, if you catch the ball for eight yards, you'd like for the guy to run eight yards or more. That's what happens on those kind of passes, but you can't do it if it's really First and 10 at the 34, three minutes to go. Look at, a run, look at all the room on the right corner, right over here on the right side of the screen. Look at, uh-oh, now he's coming in motion. Three wideouts again for the Raiders. Rocket stays in. Evans in trouble. It's a block. And has the completion across the way to Rocket Ismail. That was the spot to throw the ball to begin with because the safe the corner was about 12 yards deep. That's like stealing. See, that's like stealing. Look at him jump out of the out of the pocket. A lot of room. Look at composed. Throws the ball to the rocket. He makes the catch. Knocked out of bounds. By Rod Woodson. Hard hit by Woodson. Rod Woodson last year had more interceptions than any stealer. He had eight since Mel Blunt had 11 interceptions back in 1975. Here's Harvey Williams, gets away from one man, but not the second. He's going to be brought down quickly by Carnell Lane. The Raiders will change their lineup up here a little bit now. Kirkland, the linebacker, 99, with Putzig on the play, and he got penetration. Raiders will let the clock run down to the two-minute warning. So two minutes remaining here in the first half of play. The Raiders down by a touchdown, but trying to get even here before intermission. Two minutes to play. It's 14-7 Pittsburgh. Wide receivers so far, especially uh, Daryl Hobbs and Rocket Ismail. And Vince Evans talked this week about the importance of speed at that wide receiver spot in sports totally. Speed kills. Well, it really does. I think that it has a very good effectiveness against defenses. Uh, but certainly defenses are... are um, you know, going to try to stop us at the line of scrimmage to slow us down somewhat. But in doing that, hopefully that will create someone else. Being open. And there's Vince now in his 15th year in the NFL, 39 years old. He's four for five so far tonight. Vince Evans, the 39-year-old miracle of the Los Angeles Raiders. Boy, he's amazing. Look at those numbers in the preseason. Very impressive. He's still drinking Ovaltine. <laughs> I'm glad you said he's not drinking Geritol. Here's Evans in trouble. Sacked. Kevin Green, who made a tremendous impact last year with the Pittsburgh Steelers after leaving the Los Angeles Rams and coming over here, getting 12 and a half sacks for Pittsburgh, comes up with a big sack there. Yeah, he played a lot of good football for the Rams, and he's doing a good job here again again on the right of your screen. See, he goes outside and then comes inside on the play, and the, the uh, right tent. And the right tackle, Wilkerson, lets him get to the inside, and he makes the sack. Teams were going off the field, and uh, now a penalty has been called. It was thrown late. There you see Woodson jarring with uh, Charles Jordan and then pushing Jordan and getting one right back. Hey, Jordan, Jordan just stood right there, too. He didn't back up either. And that's an all-pro. Uh, and that's he, an all-pro he stood up to. Look, looks like uh, he might have been involved in the little pugilistic events when he was a kid. Can you spell that? Huh? Can you spell that? <laughs> Tom White, the referee, is going to come over and talk to Bill Cower, the head coach first of the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
Bill Cowher has done a good job with this Pittsburgh team. Young coach, coach was coaching at the Kansas City Chiefs, with the Chiefs, I should say, as a defense. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 26 on Pittsburgh. It'll be 15 yards. First down. 26 is disqualified. Wow, they have kicked Rod Woodson out of the ball game. Woodson disqualified by referee Tom White as a result of that uh, match with Charles Jordan and that shot to the head that he gave him. Well, that's a good thing to do in preseason. It makes everybody aware of the fact that you don't adhere to the spirit of the rules why they're going to put the banana peel on your shoe and get you out of the game. Huge break for the Raiders. Who have Perry at left tackle, Wisniewski at left guard, but Dan Turk now the center for the Raiders. Skrepinek over on the right side has replaced Wilkerson. Rathman and Harvey Williams in the backfield. First down for the Raiders from the 17. Vince throws an incomplete pass. He was looking to see where that line of scrimmage was to make sure that he didn't run past it. And there's Woodson still giving the officials an earful as he walks off the field. He doesn't be quiet. He'd want to get another 15 for his team. Willie Williams has gone in and replaced Woodson now. Woodson heading down the tunnel and back into the Pittsburgh locker room. He's a great football player. All right, it'll be a first down. Number 21 defense. The quarterback is still in the cock pocket. Five yards. First down. Well, another personal foul called against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Dion figures. The other cornerback. <laughs> He's the right cornerback. Woodson on that left side. Now the right cornerback figures gets called for a penalty, hitting Vince Evans. Yeah, that's you know the whole story about you know the guy said you stink to the official when the guy steps up 15 CF yards. Then he says, how do I smell from here? <laughs> Harvey Williams spinning at the line of scrimmage and not getting up. He didn't see much playing time though. Getting the opportunity with the Raiders. Evans on second down. Incomplete. Trying to go to Jeff. Darren Terry breaks it up. Evans a little slow climbing to his feet. Yeah, you get hit like that, you're going to be slow coming off the floor. But he came up. Watch the quarterback get decked here. Look at this. Here it comes, right here. Look at that shot. That's Ray Seals with the big hit. And Seals has got a lot of big hits here this afternoon. 97. And he's a big guy, 310 pounds at the defensive end. Evans scrambling. Touchdown, Darryl Hobbs again. Penalty flag down. Evans is down. 12-yard touchdown pass from Evans to Darrell Hobbs. I tell you that Evans, he's amazing. It's, it's easy to understand why they like him like they do. And the whole team loves this guy. The penalty is going to be against Pittsburgh. And it will be a touchdown for the Raiders. Boy, this Darrell Hobbs is incredible, having an incredible preseason for Los Angeles. Here again, the key is capability. Gets outside. Look at this now. There's the shot. Touchdown. He makes sure he catches the ball. Here, jumps out of the pocket. Now watch the hit. He got hit right about the time he delivered the ball. Watch him now. Look at, look at. He feels the pressure from the backside, but he saw him coming and took the hit. Well, he was willing to stand in there and take it. Kevin Green putting a lick on him, and now Jager to try the extra point. It's Jason good. Gilden, Gilden making the hit, 51. Oh, 
So the Raiders have tied it up. Darrell Hobbs has his second touchdown of the night. It's 14-14. Lights and a recap of the first half. Went to the next one. Hank, it looks like Vince Evans going to have a headache tonight. Oh, yes, sir. Well, he might, but it was worth it for that touchdown pass that he threw. He'd been hit like that a lot. Good thing it wasn't hit above the shoulder pads like he got hit in the tummy that time, or else he'd have really been hurt. So the ball game tied at 14. Each Raider quarterback tonight, Jeff Hostetler. And Vince Evans has thrown a touchdown pass, and each has managed to hit Daryl Hobbs in the end zone. You know, I used the word tummy just a moment ago in this kind of a game with the intensity of the hitting like it is. Tummy is not a word. <laughs> for yeah, really. We ought to just use belly. <laughs> Jeff Jager been an outstanding pick. Worked very hard at it, take a lot of pride in that phase of the kicking game. There's the Raider drive, 12 plays, 74 yards, and five minutes on the button. From the 30-yard line, that's the rule this year. Jager boots it. White Stone settles underneath it at the seven-yard line. Still fighting. See, you know what we just saw here just a few moments ago? I thought the Raiders were starting to sag a little bit. They looked a little bit tired, and that, that's natural because of the three games they played on the road. But you see what big plays can do for a team. All of a sudden, they made a couple of big plays passing-wise. Evans comes in and does a terrific job, and all of a sudden, they recapture the enthusiasm and intensity level, and they're right, right back where they should be right before the halftime. They're really going to put the game tied 14-14. Billy Joe Holbert scheduled to see action late in the third quarter. May see action earlier than that. Here's the shotgun now as O'Donnell will finish out the first half. And he has a completed pass. Steelers have two timeouts left. Derek Hoskins bringing down Andre Hastings. It's short of the first down. Second and two, 31 yard line. Half minute to play in the first half. No rush again. And Shepard has the ball this time, and Eddie Anderson trucks a hard over the middle at the 43-yard line. Now Pittsburgh calls timeout. Good information tonight at 3225901 from Raider staff members. Be out there at the Coliseum. Here's O'Donnell with another first down. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Now firing deep over the middle. Boy, he had an open man. Wide open down the middle was Leslie Shepard, and O'Donnell overthrew him. Well, they're trying to have another fight begin and another penalty flag come out. This time, Scott Davis and John Duff over there for the Raiders involved. Along with Jerry Ball. And Je yeah, Jerry Ball's in there massaging their ears a little bit with a little look service also. Well, O'Donnell had plenty of time. Jerry Ball knocked John L. Williams down with a block, and then Williams took exception to that, and they were off and running. Jerry lunged that time and missed him. That guy felt like he got hit with a cannonball had he hit him. Top block, number 27, offense. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 93, defense. And he's ejected. The foul's all set. Well, they called the chop block. The official called the chop block on Willie Williams, who unfortunately plays defense, but they're going to call it on Harvey Williams. There's a chop block on the outside, blocking below the waist. So you see that block on the outside coming in? That's what they initially called. That's the chop block. On John L. John L. Williams, not Harvey. And ball is thrown out of the game, so each team's had a guy ejected now. Now the Steelers setting up a triple formation right. Yeah, that's a big blimp of the old season game. They're trying to set the standards, and that's the reason for that. Four wide now. Big pen to the left and that triple formation right. Obviously throwing it away. A little helium ball there just to get rid of it. <laughs> Scott Davis putting the pressure on O'Donnell. 
O'Donnell's kind of a steady guy, pretty reliable, Hank. Not really spectacular in this offense anyway that Pittsburgh runs. Well, that's that's a personnel of that offense, you know. But he does, he's perfect for that offense because he's big and he's strong and he runs. And he's patient and uh, very very bright and very intelligent and uses this particular scheme of things extremely well. Again, they have the four wide. The one guy back to block is John L. for O'Donnell, so he's not back there alone. And he picks up a rusher. He fires it long and deep. Raiders will try to knock it away if they can, and it is incomplete. And that should do it. That does. That's the end of the first half of play. He was going downfield long, but the Raiders there able to force an incompletion, and the first half has come to an end. With the score, the Los Angeles Raiders 14 and the Pittsburgh Steelers 14. It's up a good kick to Leslie Shepard, who comes up from the right side and goes all the way to cross field to the left side. He's still looking for room. Gets away from a man and skips out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Pretty good return by Shepard before he's finally chased out of bounds by Kevin Smith. A 28-yard pickup. Here we see the ISO here coming down the left sideline. He waits a little bit, pauses, see the cavity, pops through there nicely, nicely, and is finally knocked out of bounds. But it's a very, very fine run. All right, very a new fine quarterback, run. new quarterback now for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It is Mike Tomzak, 10th year out of Ohio State. Tomzak gives it to Big Bam Horn. Morris is met by Rob Holmberg of the Raiders and Kerry Brabham and Rob Fredrickson and brought down after a very short game. Byron Bam Morris. And they have to run the ball. They like to run the ball. We talked about it a little bit in the first half, but Ron Earhart is the offensive coordinator. It's, a, it's an extension of the giant uh, offense a little bit when they won the Super Bowl game. They travel slowly. They take their time. They're very patient, they're very patient like play action passes, re reverses, draws, and screens. And they like to stick it right at you. There's a play action right there. And the rush up the middle. He gets the pass off to Morris this time. Being chased by Brandon, who knocks him out of bounds, but not before he has a first down. I don't think there's a better, better team in the league with screens and the play action passes in Pittsburgh. 16 yard pickup on the play. Tom Zack last week played. He was six out of 12 passing against Miami last year. Didn't see much action. Completed 29 to 54 passes, but he's been around a long time, been with a few teams, been around the block, knows his way up and down a football field. Well, you know, the great thing about him, he's a great attitude guy, a terrific team guy, and he's got a lot of ability, a lot more than you think he has. He's won a lot of, a lot of football games in the league, and especially for the Bears when he was a starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears. The fullback is Bryce Abrams, who carried the football there for the first time tonight, and Rob Fredrickson brings him down. Tom, Tom Zach uh, Hank spent his first six years with Chicago before moving on to Green Bay and Cleveland and finally here to Pitt. I've been doing Raider football for 13 years now and I still can't pronounce it Raider. Well, now <laughs> came down at halftime, check on me and make sure I see it right. <laughs> Here's Tom Zach's pass over the middle, a tremendous lift put on Hastings by Kerry Bradham, but he somehow managed to hang on it. 17 yard pickup, first down, and I mean Brabham really put a lick on him. Watch what happens here. Plenty of room on the outside. A cushion coming in the inside. Look at the hit. Look at the hit on the inside. A terrific shot by Brabham, number 40. Just outside the 35-yard line, first down. Ball game is tied at 14. Here's Bam Morris. Steps out of the tackle of one man and is tripped up in the backfield. For the Raiders, Darren Butler. Coming up to make the tackle. You know, we were talking about Tom Zach a little while ago. He's seven and one here as a starter. That's pretty pretty strong. Yeah, his record, uh, Hank, overall is pretty good in terms of wins and losses, although most people aren't too impressed by his numbers. But the First big thing is crack back number 83, 15 yards, still first down. Yeah, the big thing. Anaheim Stadium, 7 o'clock. We'll have it for you here on KCAL. Black 
first and 25, that Shepard in motion, and a draw play to Morris, and he is met in the backfield and dropped by Rob Holmberg. The rookie, who was a seventh-round draft choice, but who was very impressive last week, Hank, because he was just such an active middle linebacker. I saw him uh, in the training camp, and I tell you, I was impressed with him the first time I saw him. He's got terrific lateral speed, good anticipation, uh, reads plays extremely well. He's going to be a very, very good prospect. And, of course, he played his football right down the street at Penn State. Holmberg actually playing on the outside, on the right side for the Raiders. Tom's out, chased out of the pocket from behind. He is stripped of the football on a hard hit. It is recovered, however, by Pittsburgh. And I think it was John Duff, the man who brought that right arm down and forced the fumble, but the Steelers recover. That's who it was. It was Duff, number 84, who gave him the cleaver over the top and knocked the ball loose, but it was recovered, as you mentioned, by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Look at, watch Duff now. Number 84, there he is. See, he strips it, has the composure to strip it with the left hand, but it takes a bounce and recovered by the Pittsburgh Steelers. John Duff, last year a tight end, this year on the defensive line. Shotgun now for Pittsburgh. On third down, they set up a screen with some room to run. But the play is foiled when Chucky Dukes loses his footing and Andre Bruce brings him down. Bruce is a very active guy. He was lined up on the left side and came all the way over to the right side and made that tackle number 56. Number one pick in the entire draft, in fact, that year, Hank, back in 1988. Right. Napoleon McCallum back deep to get the punt for the Raiders. He feels it at the 15. And here comes Napoleon going to run it back. And then he gets it up to the 23-yard line. 44-yard punt, 8-yard return. Walter Rasby is the man who makes the stop on McCallum. You know, talking about Andre Bruce when he first came to the Atlanta Falcons, I asked him, I'll tell you, I'll finish this in a little bit. You need to call a cover. You know, come yeah. on and beat him inside. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, because he's 14 all tie, 9.53 to go in the third quarter. Rich Murata along with Hank Stram, and there's Andre Bruce, Hank. Well, I was telling a story when he was in Atlanta. I asked him a question. I said, what kind of goals do you have? He said, I don't ever have goals. I said, how come? He said, well, if I, if I achieve the goal, then what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, retire? <laughs> well, the other 56 on the other side of the field is Rico Mack. Here's Vince Evans now on first down for the Raiders, scrambling. Vince and Lewis gets rid of the ball. He's got a completion and another hard hit and a night of hard hitting by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Daryl Hobbs again with the reception and brought down by Myron Bell. That's, a, that's quite an achievement. Look at that. Look at this. Evans escapes again. Got the traveling music going. And here again to Hobbs. And look at Hobbs. The great thing about this catch, he maintains, maintains possession of the ball, protects the ball good. Usually get hit like that on the side of the ball, the ball squirts out. Four more receptions for Daryl Hobbs tonight for 63 yards. He had four for 77 last week against Dallas. And that memorable 39-yard punt return as well. Evans chased from behind, and his pass intended for Kevin Smith is incomplete. And once again, Vince Evans visits the artificial turf. I'd like to see him get the ball to the tight ends a little bit more than they have. They got one pass uh, during the course of the evening to the tight ends, and that's the only one. They got that early in the game to Glover and an outside move down the sideline. Trying to get that one to Kevin Smith. Smith, the number seven draft pick in 1992. And we have a penalty here called against number 27 Pittsburgh. defense. Five yards. It's a first down. An illegal contact call against Willie Williams. Williams having problems tonight for Pittsburgh. Ball brought out to the 42-yard line and a first down for the Raiders. And the Raiders have their second offensive unit in the ball game: Jenkins, Strepanak, Turk, Stevens, and Montoya. And Jordan and Hobbs, the wide receivers. Evans was looking long, can't find anybody. Now he throws up the right sideline, and he's got Charles Jordan. Good pass for the Raiders. 17-yard pickup for Los Angeles. Another first down. Ed Robinson making the tackle. 
and Charles Jordan, who, like Darrell Hobbs, is bidding for a spot on this football team. Well, they're very, they've are very they been very impressive in what they've done in the games that we've seen so far. And here again, I can't, I hate to belabor the point, but that play was a successful play because of the ability to uh, move out of the pocket when he had pressure and complete the pass. Talking about Ben Simmons, he's been terrific. Rico Mack, we understand, has suffered a fractured left ankle. So terrible news for the Pittsburgh Steelers as they lose Rico Mack. Evans completed pass. There's a pass to the tight end, Hank. They get it to Kevin Smith. Nice play, actually, pass. Rolls the linebackers and provides the tight end to come across the middle and be wide open like he was on the play. A good, a good uh, reception and uh, a nice gain on the play and a first down. Again, Robinson on the tackle, an 11-yard pickup. First and 10 for the Raiders with the ball at the 30-yard line. Raiders mixing up their personnel. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 90, extra steps, first down. Jeff Scanina is the man, second-year player out of Purdue. His name not pronounced the way it looks. It is pronounced Scanina. There you see it right there. I'm not going to call his name. I'm just going to say his name is Purdue. <laughs> That's where he's from, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is. And old Purdue is nailed there. They're giving Vince Evans a pounding tonight. Well, oh, they really are. They're testing his armor. And Scanina is spelled Z-G-O. NINA. And the Raiders with another first down. They've moved the ball now to the 15 yard line. Los Angeles mixing up that personnel. Evans staying in at quarterback, but now Harvey Williams in the backfield, along with Tom Rathman. Steelers now have been called 10 penalties for 100 yards. The game clock is 7 minutes, 55 seconds. Billy Joe getting ready to come in for Vince Evans, probably on the next offensive series for Los Angeles. He's loosening up the suit for him. There's Hobbs, wide left. Charles Jordan, wide right again. Harvey Williams, straight up the middle, hurdles a man. Nice job by Williams, and a good pickup. Looks like six yards on the play. Gary Jones makes the tackle. I'd like to see him uh, get into the open and, and make it and break a big run. That would be great for this team offensively and for good for his confidence. Well, I think he has the ability to do it, uh, Hank. He's a very slick runner and quite Second fast. Down. Look at Rathman, number 44, gets a lead block that provides him with an opportunity to go through the hole and pick up a nice game. Dan Turk working at center. Evans backs Kevin Smith and then off the line and then sends Smith in motion. Here's Rathman. Big free agent from the San Francisco 49ers brought down for no gain. Robinson makes the tackle. Gill, the number 51, came in there. He's the guy that gave such a big hit on Evans early in the game. Came over from the inside linebacker position. Got another good uh, hit on Rathman. Take a look at those numbers. You can see what kind of a receiver Tom Rathman is. He's known as not only as a powerful runner and a blocker, but this is a guy who can really catch the football. Four times in his career, he's had more than 40 receptions. That's how you get nearly 2,500 yards in receiving as a fullback. Evans over the middle trying to go to John Morton. Morton, a wide receiver out of Western Michigan, a long shot to make the team, and another one of this wide receiver core. Tried to get open in the end zone. But it's incomplete, and the Raiders now will go for three. And he's another guy that's got good speed. Very, very good speed. First-year player out of Western Michigan. Evans goes off the field. His uh, work might be done for the night. A 27-yard field goal attempt now for Jeff Jager, who last year converted on 35 of 44. And so far this season, as you see, is three for four. 27 yards away. Jager's kick is good. Raiders have assumed the lead. Six minutes, 13 seconds to go. Third period of play, and it's the Raiders 17, the Steelers 14. 14 over Pittsburgh. Jeff Jager getting ready to kick off, and on this kick coverage team now, the Raiders have all young guys. They don't have their regular squad here of special teamers, Hank. Well, you know what this is, too. These are the lightning guys, all linebackers and defensive backs on this kickoff uh, coverage team. They want to get that down there quickly. 
with the kick uh, coming back, you know, the boomerang kick coming back at you so fast, they want to get lightning down there to cover and make sure they get the stop it before they get much yards on the play. They didn't do a very good job. Now this is Leslie Shepard. Again, keeping in mind, that's not the Raiders' regular kick re uh, coverage team. You know, you can win a spot in a team, perhaps. What's she so embarrassed about? <laughs> there she is. Well, she doesn't want to be on television. Uh, I'll tell you, she doesn't need to be embarrassed with that face. No, no, that's <laughs> right. She just said she was number one. Did you see that? <laughs> All right. All right, first and 10 for the Steelers here at the 37-yard line. Six minutes to go in the third quarter, and the Steelers are down by three. They've got Tom Zag in the quarterback spot. They fake the handoff to Morris. Intended for Shepard, poorly thrown ball by Tom Zag. You know, the great thing about last week's win against the Dallas Cowboys, the second unit of the, of the Raiders really dominated and out hit the Cowboys' number two team, and they have to feel good about that. Uh, the way they played last week has got to be a big bonus for those young people. Those numbers that you see of Tom's act, 6 of 12, were accomplished last week in the 24-14 defeat by the Steelers at the hands of the Miami Dolphins. Shepard in motion. This big fan, Morris, and he is running through people. To the 46-yard line, Rod Fredrickson finally corrals him after a 17-yard game. Morris, I'll tell you the good blocking by the offensive lineman. Looked like a guard and a tackle pulling on the play. They get out in front with the ball carry in great shape. Penalty on the play. And another bad block against uh, the Steelers. Back. Number 88, 15 yards, still second down. That was Holberg, number 57, coming over, coming over and pursuing on the play. Andre Hastings called for the crackback block. Four times they've been flagged for illegal blocks tonight. Yeah, I, I, that's the most I've seen that uh, in a long, long time. Second and 24 from the 24-yard line for the Steelers. Time's back in trouble. Brought down, he fired it forward. Let's see if they allow the sack or not. Austin Robbins, who was very yeah, impressive last week, was the man who got to Tom Zack. And apparently it'll just be an incomplete pass. Here's another shot of it. Watch Robbins coming into the picture. Gets him from the backside and a hit up front. Put him in the vice. And he tries to uh, deliver the ball without a penalty and gets by with it in good shape. Robbins was very impressive. Second half of play last week. Trying to make his mark, impress the coaches, as he says. Tom Zach fires it upfield along the sideline. Ellis has the grab. And they say he was inbounds, or at least he was being pushed out of bounds. It would have been inbounds had he come down. That's what the call was. He was up in the air, got pushed out of bounds, and they call it a completed forward pass. Tom Zach is a very very, very cool customer back there at quarterback. Nothing bothers him. He's got a lot of poise, a lot of confidence. He just stands back there and throws the ball and had pretty good pressure on him that time, but still got rid of the ball in good shape. Late hit on the quarterback. Unnecessary steps. 15 yards. First down. Austin Robbins is the man called for the unnecessary roughness. Here you see in 95, he got rid of the ball and gave him a little massage in the back, and that's why they called the penalty. That would have probably been allowed last year, but with a new rule this year on the enforcement, now as soon as the quarterback throws the ball, then that player has one step. It used to be when he was done with his entire motion, then you had a step. Yeah, but that, that's what it is. It's a step, and he, he, got, him, he got him before he got that step. Here's Dan Morris. Good yardage around the left side, driven out of bounds by Dan Lamb. Jackson, 65, and Duval Love. Number 67, Duval used to play with the Rams. Holding, number 73, 10 yards, still first down. The holding call is on Justin Strelzik. <laughs> 72, Cersei is the one holding on the play. We'll see it. We will. 
see any holding on that play, did you? Well, they called it. <laughs> First and 20 now at the 38. There's a phantom hold on that play. And there's a phantom receiver in the area for Tom Zack. <laughs> see that ball upside down. Tom Zack seems to frustrate fans, I guess, in whatever city he, he plays in. But as uh, Hank pointed out, coaches like him because he's got a, a good attitude. He seems to be able to work his way into continued employment that way. Yeah, and he's a good leader along with it. Guys respect him. They follow him well. And that's a big thing of a leader. You know, you, they have to have people who will follow. And that's exactly what he does. He's got that kind of a personality. Second and 20 from the 38. It's four of six tonight. And he launches a seventh pass downfield. Way long. Intended for Leslie Shepard. Raiders had that one well sniffed out. There's Joe King, who was one of two men back defensively for the Raiders, along with Darren Butler. So now it is third and 20, and the groans from the fans coming up again when Tom Zach launched that pass, which was obviously going to be long. This time, the Steelers set up a triple formation right. They go to a four-wide receiver setup. Out of the shotgun. Tom Zack going to run up the middle, unloads. Catch. I think that skipped into his hands off the artificial turf. I think that was a trap. It was a trap. It You're right. It St was a trap. Stone tried to uh, disguise that, <laughs> but the officials weren't full. Yeah, it definitely skipped. Looked like it had some peanut butter on it the way it slid up, hit the turf, and bounced right back up. Look at that. That's what happened. Definitely a skip. Definitely a skip. There you see it. Caught it on the way back up again. Here's McCallum back now to get the punt from Royals. Fields it at the 17. Fakes left. Goes right. Gets a vicious block. And is brought down at the 23-yard line. A 46-yard punt. An 8-yard return. And Bell was just creamed by the Raiders Ridley and Brabham. You know, a lot of people wonder why he's back there talking about McCallum. But he's got great, great hands. 17-14, Raiders on top. Raiders lead at 17-14 here in the third quarter. It's sold out three Rivers Stadium. The Raiders take over the football first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. And Billy Joe Holbert now comes in to play quarterback for the Raiders and hold everything. Penalty flag thrown. Raiders have changed up in their backfield now, as well as they go to Derek Gaynor and Calvin Jones in the backfield. Ball start, number 64 offense. Prior to the snap, five yards, still first down. 64 is Robert Jenkins, the Raiders' left tackle. Billy Joe Holbert, there you see his numbers for the preseason so far, six of 12. With that big touchdown pass a week ago, covering 77 yards for Charles Jordan. Over to the Calvin Jones. And the rookie out of Nebraska gets just about the five yards back on first and 15. He got a pretty good push on the right side that time, which provided him with a little crack. And you give him any kind of a crack, he's going to get through there and pick up yardage on the play. Frank Adams with the tackle, second and 10. Calvin Jones. Very productive at Nebraska with better than 3,000 yards and 40 touchdowns in his career. Calvin was over 1,000 yards last year, 1,043 yards. David Gaynor is in there, too, at the fullback spot. Fake to Gaynor. Oh, here comes a big rush on Whammo. Down goes Holbert. That did not take long for Jason Gilden, the rookie out of Oklahoma State, third-round draft pick to get in and get him. They, li they like Jason Gilden a lot. Look at he beats him. Look at nobody touched him. Nobody touched him. That's why he made such a great hit on a the quarterback. There wasn't a soul that made an attempt to block him on the play. Jason Gilden. He was a right defensive end in uh, college at Oklahoma State. And they've converted him to linebacker and obviously doing very well here. He's done. He's made some bounce very outstanding plays here tonight. Very quick. 
was Harvey Williams, adjusts to the outside. Nice job by Harvey, comes across the 25 all the way up to the 29-yard line. Good adjustment by Williams on the run. Yes, it was a very good, good vision. You got to keep your head up and the eyes open and make uh, decisive moves, right or wrong. You got to make a cut. He did a good job on that particular run. Six. Now here you see him, the head up and the eyes open, makes a move to the outside, makes a little step, breaks across the Denver face of the linebacker the coming line. across and picks up very good yardage on the play. Excellent run by Harvey Williams, who played for the Kansas City Chiefs, 6'2", 220, and played his collegiate football at LSU. And he got 16 on that, but not enough for the first down. Gossett will have to punt for Los Angeles. Blocks it high, not too deep. Leslie Shepard's going to let it bounce, and it gets a Pittsburgh bounce. In fact, it came all the way back to the 48-yard line. The Raiders not getting a fortuitous bounce of the ball that time, and only a 24-yard kick for Gossett. Play in the third quarter. Travel for our KCAL sports crew is arranged through U.S. Air with convenient connections at Pittsburgh's International Airport to over 90 cities throughout the East. To the East Coast, U.S. Air begins with you. All right, the Steelers take over now with the ball at their own 49-yard line, first and 10. Tom Zach, the quarterback. And the give off left tackle goes to Chucky Dukes, a first year player out of Boston College. And Rob Fredrickson is the man that brings him down. And there's the moon over Pittsburgh. Not exactly as romantic sounding as moon over Miami, but nonetheless, that's it. I, I don't think that's the moon. Those are the lights in the stadium someplace. <laughs> Gain on that play of six yards, second and four. And an injured Raider. That's a, quite a shot he takes from Tim Simpson. Yeah, it was a, it was a good hit. It surely was. Bradman's a good hitter, though. I tell you that he's a good hitter. Tom Zach, good protection, fires right through the hands of Chucky Dukes. See there again. Anytime you throw that ball above above the shoulder pads or close to the helmet. You got to be careful. It's going to bounce right out of there, and that's exactly what happened on that play. It's got to be thrown at the number. After Fred Nicola, right in front of Kerry Brabham, attending to him on the sideline. George Anderson, right behind him. There's Corey Holiday out wide to the right now as they go into a four-receiver setup. And Holiday, the extra receiver, to get the pass completion, and it's good to. Hastings, short gain on the play, but they only needed four yards for the first down. Whistles blowing just as the play got underway. And probably against Pittsburgh here. And motion penalty. Number 73 offense, five yards, still first down. That's Justin Strelzik. Fifth-year offensive lineman out of Maine. Started a lot of games last year. Started 12, in fact, for Carlton Hasselrig, who's still not ready to play. Hasselrig has a dislocated wrist. And he also, of course, was in uh, rehab last year for substance abuse. Strelzik stepped up. And he started most of last season. He'd like to be there again. Here's the handoff to Chucky Dukes. Dukes only 5'9", 202 pounds. Austin Robbins making the tackle. Played pretty well, Dukes did last week against Miami. Four carries, 34 yards. That's eight and a half yards per. He spent most of last year on the practice squad for Pittsburgh, but bidding for a spot this year on the regular roster. The rosters will be set at 53 players this year, and you can have 45 players active and also a third quarterback who can be dressed. Well, we come to the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Los Angeles Raiders 17, the Pittsburgh Steelers 14. She's having a lot of fun. I wonder what's in that cup. Pittsburgh Steelers with the ball on the Los Angeles 42-yard line as we start the fourth quarter. There's the Pittsburgh Steelers bench. Warm, humid night. 
Now he's taking a breather over there on the sideline. Here we go now on second down. Still Tom Zack at quarterback for Pittsburgh. And again, trying to go to Chucky e. Dukes. Well, they're going to see what Dukes can do in a short time here tonight. Was nicked up in that game against Dallas last week. Nothing real serious, but they held him out for cautionary measure tonight. Willie Broughton suffered a dislocated elbow in that game, and he's out for a month. So, Kerry Brabham, there you see Hank. He's made a pretty good impression tonight. Up and run, see if they try to go up on top. There it is. And they've got the completion. Completed pass to Corey Holiday. And a good pickup up the left side. Holiday caught a couple of passes last week. Joe King on the coverage. See over here on the, on the right side of the screen. He runs down to field and stops into the void area does a nice job of picking up another five yards after his first hit. Harvard did a nice job of uh, stepping over Dan Land actually. Here's Dukes. Off right tackle. Squirts through. Good pickup. Joe King makes the stop. Here's Brabham. Apparently he's all right. Yeah, it'd be hard to keep those kids out of the game if they can get back in because they're trying desperately to make this roster. And playing in this kind of a game is very important. Steelers trailing the Raiders by three. 17-14. 14 minutes to play in the ball game. Tom Zank gets the check and deep. Steps out of the ball. Fumble. And a penalty flag also thrown. Pittsburgh recovered the fumble. Franklin made the stop. And there's Bill Cower yelling, hold on to that ball. Yeah, they've opened up some pretty good holes talking about the Steelers' offensive line. Bag. Fumble recovered by Pittsburgh. First down, one and goal. Seeing a good block downfield, good hit. But the, fall, the ball rolls right into the arms of a Pittsburgh Steeler. Shepard, number 83. The hit applied by Keith Franklin to force the fumble. Now it's first and goal. Eight yard line for Pittsburgh. Dukes. It's away from a man all the way down to the one yard line. A seven yard pickup by Dukes. a little bit the opposite of what happened last week in Dallas. I didn't mean to catch up. The young players of the Raiders control the line of scrimmage and won that. They're getting licked here tonight by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Look at the blocking up front. Good running. Missed tackle. Missed tackle that time by 57. Holmberg. Backs forward short of the, first, of the uh, touchdown. Victor Jones stopped by Greg Beaker. Boy, Beaker really made a good hit that time, or else he'd have gone into the end zone. Watch it again. It's Victor watch Jones, Beaker, the fullback. Watch Beaker. He's a little high. You'd like for him to hit that, but he's still knocked him backwards. That's a key. Here's another look at it. Watch it there. See, he's very high, but he's strong enough upstairs to knock him backwards, and that's what you got to do as a linebacker. Boy, Beaker did good shot. Shot. This could be a play action. No. Victor Jones again. Steelers signaling touchdown. And now the official signal. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. They got another good push. Look him up front. Line of scrimmage. Now crosses the plane and is in there for the touchdown. Good surge. Good surge by the offensive line. Charlie Bauman's point after is good. Steelers lead it 21-17. Steelers lead 21-17 after the touchdown by Victor Jones from a yard away. There's Victor Jones, who had trouble getting it across that line of scrimmage the last two times he carried. Fifth-year player out of LSU. He's only 5'8". They don't have tall running backs with this team. Jones 5'8", Chucky Dukes 5'9". 
Here's the kickoff going to Charles Jordan now at the 12 yard line. Looking for something to open up. Now he speeds up around the left side. And Set down by the artificial turf. By Dion Figures. Charles Jordan. Last year was he was active for four games for the Raiders. But then uh, suffered an injury and was on the injured reserve most of the rest of the season. This is going to be a very important uh, series for Hobart. It'll be very important for him to do well on this drive and get him into the end zone. Jordan goes out wide right this time. It's John Morton wide to the left side. And the coach is sticking with their plan and giving these players an opportunity. And now here's Hobart in deep trouble and down he goes. Clark with the sack. And that's when he had to be careful when he get hit from the back side. That's when they pumped that ball out of there and you wind up with a fumble, they recovered. He, he maintained good possession of the ball on that ball. Here we go, a blitz up the middle, 53, the linebacker coming through there, puts the pressure on him, gets him from the back side, look at him, he, he was able to squeeze that ball well enough so that it didn't pop out of there. Reggie Clark that time, 53, blitzing on the play. Calvin Jones brought down, doesn't get much there. Winston Buckner was a very high draft pick. There you see him. He uh, goes about 310, and that's on a good day right now. He's uh, got some weight problems that the coaches are concerned about, but he was a second-round draft pick, and the rookie out of Clemson, they feel if he keeps his weight down, will be an impact player. on the coverage makes the tackle but the first down will not stand Robert Jenkins that time the left tackle didn't do a very good job at a defensive end holding number 77 offense 10 yards the third down they call the holding penalty on Rich Stevens second year player out of Tulsa here you see in number 77 holding on the play gets his arm grabs his arm gets him around the waist and they call the penalty on the play. Now it is third and 19 from the 19 yard line Morton wide right. Raiders double it up on the left side. Incomplete. Raider pass intended for Doug Thomas. Couldn't hang on. Willie Williams defensively making the play when that has Art Shell shaking his head. The players all come back avoiding Art. <laughs> Ring around the rosy, way on the outside. Here's Gossett. Had a good night coming. That one is blocked. Partially blocked. It's going to be a very short kick. He's actually getting some distance out of it now as he rolls up to the, just across midfield. And the Raiders live fortunately there, even though the punt was blocked. It's still a 33-yard punt. There's a pretty happy coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers who hang on to a lead here of 21-17. And your season tickets. 310 322 5901. Now, on first down, the Pittsburgh Steelers give the ball to Chucky Dukes. Dukes brought down by John Duff and the man that you saw there, number 47, Lester Ridley. Safety for the Raiders. Chucky Dukes getting a good workout here in the second half. First year player out of Boston College who spent most of last year on the practice squad. Zach remains in at quarterback. There's Dukes again. That's a lead block, and now he's in trouble. And he's brought down. A good job there by the Raiders 
Darren Butler, who played off of the block and came up and made the tackle. There's Butler. Nice job, because it appeared as though he was going to be blocked out of the play, but he stayed with it, shrugged off the block, and made the tackle. Offside, number 58 defense. Lining up in the neutral zone. There you see, Five using the hands on the outside. The Does a very good job. Very good job on the outside of using the hands and uh, putting himself in a position to make that tackle. Keith Franklin, the man called for the penalty for the Raiders. Now the Raiders have receded for 10 penalties, Pittsburgh for 13, and we're getting a real preseason total of penalties here now in this second half. They're piling up for the preseason record. Contact to Dukes. Struggles across the 40-yard line. You know, one thing going into the game, we talked about the possibility, you know, that uh, the Raiders had to do a little better job of rushing the football. Pittsburgh has rushed for 112 yards and L.A. 49. There's Steve Hendrickson who made the tackle wearing number 50 for the Raiders previously with Dallas and San Francisco and San Diego. Kind of a wild man. He seems to pick up nicknames wherever he goes and they're never uh, too uh, complimentary. Nicknames like Rocket Head, the, the Thing, the Devil, and Chuck from that little doll in the in movie that was killing people all over the place. <laughs> Incomplete pass. Hendrickson was one of the Raider free agents. You know, the Raiders did a great job in the offseason acquiring these free agents. Look at that list. Look at the important people they got here. Jerry Ball, Kevin Gogan, the starter with the Super Bowl champs. Uh, Hendrickson, Albert Lewis, of course, uh, with the Kansas City, great to Pro Bowl quarterback. And then the guys in the backfield, Rathman, Harvey Williams, along with uh, Jamie Williams, and then from San Francisco. All of whom have been productive players with other teams, so they've been very good acquisitions. Raiders didn't lose much in the free agent this year. They lost tight end Ethan Horton and Todd Pete, two players on the hit. There's a pass over the middle, complete down to the 25-yard line. Goes Hastings, run down by Dan Land. 15-yard pickup on the play. Tackle by Land. Here you see a little bump at the line of scrimmage. And he's on the outside receiver, throws the ball inside, right on the button to Hastings. Hank, the, the receivers are loving it because the uh, the corners, they have to let go before that five-yard uh, chucking area now, and they have to release. Yeah, they can only, before they used to get by with mortar, they'd go seven or eight yards. Now they can only go five. But it has always been the same, but they never enforced it. Dukes fumbled. He was hit hard, and the ball came out of his hands again. Kerry Brabham and Austin Robbins on the play. They forced the fumble, and Dukes really having a problem hanging on to the football, which is not going to put him on the good side of Bill Cower. Now we'll see the hit by Robbins. Number 95, look at inside, right from the good pursuit. Knocks the ball loose, but it goes out of bounds. It was a good, good hit. Good pursuit angle by Robbins. Just grab him low and Robbins high. Let the ball went out of bounds. Times that going for it all. Looked like it would be a touchdown Pittsburgh, but it's incomplete. I tell you, you can't, for Leslie Shepard. Yeah, you can't throw him any better than that. That was a perfect. He stretched out nicely. Looked like he had the ball and then dropped it on the way down. Tomzak is 7 out of 15, and he probably deserved a touchdown pass there. He pumps to the left, throws it right down in the middle area, right over the top. He has it. Oh, that's close. That was close. The ground should not permit a fumble. Let's look. Yeah, that looked like it, it did hit the ground and popped out of it. It was a close one. Yeah, no replay anymore. They just march on. Here comes Tomzak straight up the middle. He's going to run it. Got out of the way from that pressure, and Tom Zach's going to take it all the way down to the goal line. Did he get in? No, down at the one-yard line, a 28-yard pickup by Tom Zach straight up the middle. Well, he saw it. He took it out. I did. He ran a lot faster than I thought he could run, but that's typical of what happens when somebody's chasing you. As a quarterback, he turned on the afterburner and almost got in there for the touchdown. Raiders had the pressure from the outside. Yeah, look at that. Look at the middle. Big cavity in the middle area. They're covering the outside. Look at him go. Right in here. Now watch him get in there and try to get in for the touchdown. Lowers the shoulder. 
had he been had he outstretched his arms, it would have been a touchdown. He had the ball and fell a little bit sideways, and the ball fell short of the end zone, of the end line. And Tom Zack comes up to the line of scrimmage and calls timeout. So we will see if Pittsburgh can get into the end zone when we return. Steelers lead 21-17. That upcoming schedule for the Raiders. We'll take a look at that in, uh, a little bit later on if you can get an idea of what's coming up for the silver and black. They're going right if they run. There they are. Right side of the center to Victor Jones. Jones tries to squirm in. Touchdown for Victor Jones. Well, again, they had a good push up front. Just a simple old lead play. Man on man blocking. Everybody gets a push on the man on him. And the back goes through the whole leads. Here you see it. Look at the good push. Look at the back going through the hole. Nice and low. Goes into the crack. Going for the two-point conversion here now, Hank. From, this is from the two-yard line. Here's Randy Cuthbert. He's in easily into the end zone. The two-point conversion is good. You know, it's a big difference. Three yards to two yards. You get any kind of a push at all from two yards, you're going to be able to get in there for the touchdown, especially if they don't have the right people in there. So Cuthbert gets the two-point conversion. Victor Jones is the man who got the touchdown. Look at that. He's got three yards tonight. He's got two touchdowns. All right, we have 6.34 to go in the ball game, and the Pittsburgh Steelers now with that eight points with the touchdown and two-pointer, now lead it 29-17. Seven all at the end of the first, 14 all at halftime. The Raiders were leading at the end of three, 17-14, but this fourth quarter belongs to the Steelers. They've scored 15 points and lead at 29-17. Now the kickoff from Bauman. And it will be fielded by Calvin Jones. He probably going to get it to 12, gets control of it, finds a big hole up the middle, and comes all the way out to the 41-yard line before he's brought down by Foggy. That's what's going on. Look at this guy. number one. He's gone. Oh, how do you like that? The Raider fans go to the ultimate, the extremes to show their loyalty. Did you see in the lobby of the hotel all the stuff that people bought from the Raiders in the lobby of the hotel? is terrific, the great interest they have around the country. Hank, I tell you, I've been traveling with this team for so many years, and it's that way in every city you go into. I know it is. It's just amazing. Here's Holbert looking downfield. He has a completion to Morton. Rolled out of bounds, close to the first down. Willie Williams again on the tackle. And Stevens, Jenkins, Montoya, Turk. Stepanak are in the game from an offensive standpoint, offensive lineman. Now in this fourth quarter, look who the Raiders have centering the football. Max Montoya, who has been a great uh, Pro Bowl guard for many years, four times Pro Bowl. Probably his final season, he's playing some center here in the fourth quarter. Here's a pass to Derek Gaynor. Short game, turned it into about a six-yard pickup. But Montoya this year, of course, is playing a backup role, uh, Hank, for the Raiders, because they got Gogan, and he's showing his versatility along the line. Well, he's another guy that's been a great old, great pro, and he's at a stage in his career where he can help this team uh, as a reserve, as a guard, or a tackle. Any place you want him as a center, he can play any place, and that's a valuable guy. They have that kind of versatility. Pass is complete over the middle. Nice bit of work by the Raiders' Doug Thomas. And they've thrown the flag. And 
course, they're very wisely not using no, uh, not using a huddle, no huddle offense in this period of the game. Wide receiver who caught that pass was Doug Thomas. He is out of Clemson. A lot of guys can kind of get lost with this bevy of receivers that the Raiders have on their football team. We haven't even seen Alexander Wright in action yet this season. Alexander had a calf muscle Five injury. Face mask, number 47. That's a first down. I talked to Fred Belutnikoff before the game this afternoon, and he said that he probably wouldn't play. He didn't want to take a chance with that leg the way it is, especially on synthetic turf. That's right. I think that was the main thing there, Hank, the right. artificial turf, because Wright was able to practice this week in Oxnard with the Raiders. But why take a chance here? We'll probably see action next week against the uh, Rams. There is Holman after the face mask penalty to Frank Adams. Incomplete. Gordon had it dropped. Adams on the coverage. I like the way he stays in the pocket. He's patient for a youngster. He suited up each week last week, last year, as the third quarterback for the Raiders. Watch Adams here does a good job of stripping the ball loose, number 47. Excellent play by Adams of the, of the Steelers. Yes, I said Morton just dropped it, but that was no drop. He was stripped of the football there, and a nice play by Adams. Ball on the 16-yard line, second and 10. Excuse me, 26-yard line, not the 16. It is second and ten. Morton is wide right. Doug Thomas who goes in motion. There's a blitz. Blitz. Ooh, pass intended for Morton incomplete. Dan Adams with the cover. Looked like he had a good chance to make that catch that time. I couldn't tell for sure, but it looked like the ball was delivered nicely right at the numbers. That's the kind of ball you ought to suck it up. Put the back of sweep around and suck it up. He's a great Hall of Famer, Fred Bolitnikov. Most valuable player in the Super Bowl Raider victory over Minnesota. Well, he looked like he looked like he had his got his right arm under Morton's hand, uh, arm, and that's what happened. He kind of knocked it out of him. Now on third down, here's a blitz again coming outside. Over trying to get away, he can't escape everybody though, and he is brought down. Sacked by Kevin Henry. And Willie Williams with blitzing number 27 on the play and the outside put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Kevin Henry 76 comes right up the middle with a little high diddle diddle right there. And there you see him making a tackle makes the adjustment on the quarterback and makes a tackle to the right. Pretty good split there. <laughs> Probably get a half a sack each for those two guys and now the Raiders. On fourth and 17, we'll go for it to the 33-yard line. Holder unloads, completed pass. Thomas has got it, but he's going to be nowhere near the first down, and Pittsburgh will take over on down. Willie Williams bringing him down, and the Raiders are foiled in their attempt to get back within one score. Now they trailed 29-17 here, Hank. It's a 12-point margin. It was good use of the two-point conversion by Pittsburgh. Definitely, definitely. And that's what's going to make the game a lot more interesting during the course of the season because there's a lot of strategy involved in this two-point play. And especially, especially if you score first and go for the two, you're up eight to nothing. You know, then what are you going to do? Then you make the put the pressure on the other team. Are they going to kick it? Are they going to try to go for two? You know, it's and at the end of the game, when you're down by two, at least. At least now, you know, you can get back in the game. Where you couldn't before. Holiday goes in motion. They give to Randy Cuthbert, and Cuthbert cuts outside and has plenty of running room. A 17-yard pickup. Lester Ridley making the tackle. And a new quarterback now for the... Pittsburgh Steelers. There he is. That is Andy Kelly, 6'3, 212 pounds, first year player out of Tennessee, who joined Pittsburgh as a free agent last year. A brief stint with uh, the Arizona Cardinals. Last week he played quite a bit against Miami, completed 14 of the 34 passes. Cuthbert picks up the first down. He's got the football again. Running upright over the right side. Keely Calhoun slowed him up and then grabbed him, brought him down. And we 
have a timeout called by the Los Angeles Raider, and they have to run. And of course, they haven't been featuring this that much, and uh, I think they're going to be disappointed if they lose this game, but they're going to be glad to get out of here without any serious injuries. On second and seven, this is Steve Avery, big fullback, pounding forward to where Hendrickson brought him down. There's Steve, who last year was with the San Diego Char Chargers. Hendrickson here now. He racks to the play, pushes his way through the traffic, taking a good angle. Here you see, and gets him on the cutback. Very, very good effort on the part of Hendrickson. Hendrickson, as I mentioned, spending last year with San Diego. He started 10 games at outside linebacker for them, but he also played tight end. He played H back. He played full back. He played running back. This guy has actually played eight different positions in the National Football League. Yeah, he did everything but pump the balls up. <laughs> and if somebody would have asked him. Oh, well, yeah, he'd have <laughs> blown it up. Wearing number 50. Not always the most popular practice player because the guy doesn't know how to slow down, right? I mean, he goes, you know, 100 miles an oh, hour yeah. all the time. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of people, a lot of players on that team, uh, especially veteran players, don't appreciate that very much. This is Holiday in motion. Kelly, the quarterback, gives to Avery on the left side. Steps out of the tackle of Holmberg. Steps out of the tackle of Bradham. Struggles forward all the way down to the 22-yard line. A 22-yard pickup for Steve Avery. And is this guy pumped up? Well, again, I mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again. The number two guys of the Steelers are just pounding on the number two guys with the Raiders, just opposite of what happened last week. But again, Darren Butler finally brought him down. Look at this now. Nice block out in front, a push, cut back in here, maintains the balance. Rabba misses the tackle. He was in good shape, and normally he is a, tack a good tackler. He put his head down, closed his eyes, and missed the tackle. That's what happened on the play. Mr. Ridley, who had not had play early, came back and finally helped to apply the finisher on Avery, who's brought down this time after a very short game. Farrah Collins makes the tackle. Along with the Rob Holmer. Raiders had seven draft picks this year, seven rounds of the draft, and three of them were linebackers. Holmberg, Fredrickson, and James Folston. They're all good active guys, too. We have reached the two-minute notification as we look at Farrah Collins. Two minutes remaining to be played in the ball game. With the score, the Pittsburgh Steelers 29, the Los Angeles Raiders 17. Trailing 29-17, two minutes to play. Andy Kelly at the controls right now for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He has Ellis and Holiday wide to the right side. Now Holiday goes in motion behind him. Here's Tuckler. He's running well tonight. Well, they got some big holes in that offensive line, I'll tell you that. You gotta be, those backs have to be all smiles. Waiting for, for the quarterback to give them the ball because they got some big holes. Tim Rother just signed this week by the Raiders, making the tackle. Here we go it again. It's a nice cutback. Linebacker overruns the play, and he cuts back underneath the linebacker, picks up a nice gain on the play. First and 10. Look at that rushing yardage for Pittsburgh tonight. For 200 yards, here's Cuthbert again. And the Raiders only had one running first down all night. Short gain, tackle made by Keith Franklin. And the clock running down. We're just barely over a minute to play in the ball game. Pittsburgh keeping it on the ground, letting the clock run out. I'd be surprised if they took a shot at the end zone here, knowing that these teams meet not too far down the line in the regular season. November 27 in Los Angeles. They may be content here to just let the clock run out. Eh? Well, it might be, but again, here they are. They're, they've got a lot of young players trying to make an impression, and you don't want to deprive them of that. Uh... Well, that's what they're going to do. Down They'll the just ball. let it run out. No sense in uh, angering a future opponent, right? Right. Fans don't like it, but that's it. 
ball game is over basically at that point. There's still 30 seconds showing on the clock, but the clock will run out now. And there's Art Shell walking off with the first defeat of the year for the Raiders. Al Davis was very prophetic before the game. I asked about their practice. We didn't practice very well. We're tired because of the road trips and everything. Very prophetic. That's exactly where they look here today. So even though they'll be on the road next week, at least they get to stay in Southern California. They play the Rams in Anaheim. It'll just be a nice little bus ride down to Anaheim. It'll be like a home game for them, and uh, it'll be most welcome. In fact, it'll be their first time that they play in the Pacific Time Zone. Final score here tonight at Three Rivers Stadium. Steelers 29, the Raiders 17.